Hello, dear viewers and listeners. Welcome to the latest episode of Extra Extra. It's all about whiskey. I remain your host, Jason Johnson Yellen. He remains Joshua Morrissey Hatton. Hello, Joshua Morrissey Hatton. Would it make sense to you if I started singing like, get out of my dreams and into my car? <laughs> right? Like it makes sense given yeah, I'm in the car right I, now. I was, I was trying to work out if there was a steering wheel in front of you or if you were a passenger in a moving vehicle. <laughs> I have a laptop sitting on my steering wheel. This is like perfectly, everything is positioned just right to make me look this bad. <laughs> I have a feeling that's what I normally say, but you've really carried it off with great aplomb today. Like huh, it yeah. takes a lot of effort to look this poor. That's impressive, <laughs> Joshua. I appreciate the respect. <laughs> <laughs> well, fingers crossed the connectivity works for today's episode as well. Um with you in a in a moving car, uh driving with your feet <laughs> on the steering wheel. <laughs> And typing with your ears, we'll uh, we'll see how today's episode goes. Just me and Fred Flintstone, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so regular viewers, regular listeners know that we bring in a, a whiskey-related news story. We cover it. We uh, highlight some key parts, some key quotes. And we have a good old riff and we we lay the state of the industry to bed by the end of every episode. Every episode. Every episode. This week, this episode is going to be a bit different. We are actually responding to the very sad passing of Paul McDonough, who made the Bon Accord in Glasgow what it is today. And today is July 18 that we are recording this. The episode is, of course, dropping July 19. And yesterday, July 17, it was announced on, on social media that Paul had passed. And I hadn't heard anything about his condition. I hadn't heard anything about him being in ill health for the last month. Uh, as viewers and listeners could tell by the emergence of Jess Lomas uh, behind a mic, that uh, I've been away, you've been away, Joshua, mm -hmm. and and the finger hasn't been on the pulse. But still, I was shocked yesterday when you delivered the news to me from from social media. Uh, what was your take? Yeah, well, you know, interestingly word passed on Facebook before it passed anywhere else. So as I was scrolling through my feed, and of course you don't have Facebook, so so you will not have seen this, I, I saw our, our good friend David Stirk post about it. And then I hmm. did a little digging and, you know, another name that we knew popped up and another name that we knew popped up. And, and it was just person after person after person, uh, you know, just I, either saying something like RIP big man or, or, or having some sort of a remembrance. Um, yeah, I mean, you've been out, I've been out, we haven't had our finger on the pulse, you know, at the same time, we're, we're, we're on the other side of the pond, we're in a different country. And to be fair, I'm not sure how much big man really talked about what was going on and is I know there was something in the Scottish Herald mm -hmm. uh this morning I didn't get a chance to read it because I was in a car <laughs> driving down to New Jersey um so I wasn't able to hear you know how he passed and, and maybe that information isn't divulged it doesn't even matter it, it's too early whatever yeah, it's, it is it's certainly not you know? in the in the Herald Scotland article um, they they just did exactly what you're talking about there, which is it was a series of tributes, people who remembered him uh, fondly. And, and that's what you and I wanted to spend today's extra extra doing is actually remembering the man and, and celebrating yeah. and, and talking a little bit about, you know, the, 
the little part that he played in our success as well. So um, I know where I want to begin, but but Joshua, when did you last see him and, and when did you first meet him? Two, two ends of the spectrum there. Two very different ends of the spectrum. So let's, let's begin at the ending then. Uh, sadly, the last time I saw him was just prior to COVID. And it yep. will have been... Hmm. I think it, it will have been December of 2019. I think I also went over in January of 2020. Um, yeah, I, I think so. So that would have been the last time I know since he and I have, have shared some words on Facebook and Facebook messenger, just, you know, little, Hey, how you doing? How, you know, how's COVID doing? Cause you know, the bond right. was shut down just like everybody everybody else was shut down forever. The fact that it even survived COVID was, you know, uh, a miracle in and of itself. And I'm sure it took a lot of effort. Right. Um, so, yeah, it, it would have been just before COVID. And then to my recollection, the first time I met him was with you and potentially... Uh, Mike and Meg Andrews back in August 2011. I think it was my first oh, interesting. trip to Scotland interesting. With, with you. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So that even predates the kind of the launch of the company, as, as we've always talked about, established 2011, but, uh, but launching memberships in 2012. So it was in that period between establishing and launching which actually brings me around to the very first time um, or, or an early memory that I wanted to share, which is he was already a renowned publican when we met him. And, and yeah. the bond was on very strong legs. Um, he, the, the McDonough family have been in charge of the bond for 22 years as of 2023. So... Mm. So it takes us, you know, depending how the calendar works out and the months work out, that puts them in charge of it around 2001, which actually coincides with me leaving Scotland to to make a life in America. Uh, okay. So I actually remember drinking at that end of Socky Hall Street, that kind of proximity to the Mitchell Library, but I was never in the bond. The closest I got was two doors down from the bond. There used to be an internet cafe. And I remember going into the internet cafe with my buddy Francis. Yeah. After we'd been drinking at a bar on the end of Soggy Hall Street. The reason I'm not giving you a name is the bar changed its name every two or three years. Oh. And it really wasn't known for anything and it would change ownership. It would become something else. So. You know, where we drank on the end of Soggy Hall Street was not important at all. What is remarkable to me is we were that close to what would become the Bon Accord mm -hmm. that would really take off under the leadership, the guidance of Paul McDonough. And then as a chap who no longer lived in Scotland, every time I went back to Scotland and back to Glasgow, yeah. we, we would stay in, in the Hilton. You know, yep. that's yep. that's diagonal from the Bon Accord. Like that was our spot to be because we would meet people there. We'd drink with, with Jess there, with Swede Scott there. Uh, we'd meet yeah. other friends there. You know, people on their way to Fashil would go through there. It was, it was the absolute spot to be. So with that said, when you and I launched Single Cast Nation, and moved into a world of, of whiskey and single cask releases, mm -hmm. the idea was it would be incredible if we had a presence at the Bon Accord. Yes. If you could be in Glasgow and go to this globally renowned whiskey bar and saw a single cask nation bottle on the shelf, holy moly, that would be a very early achievement. And when we approached Paul to do such a thing, he was all over the idea and more than yeah. happy to support us and was our very first partner bar, 
when we yep. launched a program <laughs> where we could then add in other bars. You know, Jack Rose then became Seven Grand in, in LA and San Diego then became uh, Barrel Thief in Seattle or Fremont, then became, um, all became partner bars after Paul McDonough at the Bon Accord. So mm-hmm. the the dram, I know you're in a car and I would not expect you to be dramming even though we're remembering uh, Paul McDonough. <laughs> glug, glug, glug. <laughs> the, the dram that I pulled off my shelf is, you know, arguably the very first thing we sold to Paul McDonough yes. at the Bon yep. Accord. Uh, it is our <laughs> Colhomin four-year-old uh, bottled July of 2012. And his bar, Paul's bar, was the only place in Scotland you could get a dram of that. So so it's with a dram of that that on behalf of the two of us, Joshua, since one of us can safely dram right now, <laughs> I say here's here's to Paul McDonough. Cheers. Cheers to that good man. Um so last last night after my work day was done, which was about 9.30. So I take that back. Sometime before my work day was done. Uh, maybe after you and I had our, had our meeting, um, I decided to have a pour of something to remember, to remember him by. And, and, you know, like you, being at the bond was was so very special and by being at the bond i i don't just mean us there physically but but our bottlings having single cast nation representation at that bar meant so much and and it the feeling that i got with our bottles being there was very similar to the feeling i remember when you and i first went into new york and started selling into new york and and we were launching our retail range in, in 2017. You know, we both had that song, you know, if, if we can make it here, we can make it anywhere in New York. <laughs> and and I got the same feeling with Glasgow, you know, or with the, with the bond in Glasgow where it felt as if we're at the bond, then, then we have a presence. Then we are, we're, we've, we've made it in, in some way. And so, so yeah, he took us early on and, and I couldn't find my bottle of Kilhoman, which was exactly the bottle that I went for. Um, I couldn't find my bottle of, of Aaron, 12-year-old, with the Pinot Noir finish. But I did find uh, our Glen Murray 12-year-old. Oh, okay. Yeah, for, first of all, bourbon. And that was bottled in August of 2012. So, so that was the first pour, first of two pours. Uh, that I had in his honor. The second one wasn't single cast nation, but it's perhaps my favorite Arden American single cask, just heavily peated, sherried beauty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it hit, it hit more than, than, than I expected um, as the night went on, you know? Well, it, it's one of those things when, when you and I are going over from Scotland you know, and, and we're seeing people a couple of times a year, maybe maybe three times a year when we're in Scotland. The mm-hmm. the times that you're not seeing them way heavy, right? I've obviously got my mom is still there, my brother's still there. Sure. Um, you know, dear friends are still there. You know, when you go through that extended time not seeing them, it weighs heavy. And yeah. and and so for me, I saw Paul last May when I was over in Scotland and, uh-huh. and you were, you know, unable to come over because, you know, you'd got a, a COVID diagnosis <laughs> before you were able to get on a plane and come over. Uh, um, yeah. And it, you know, and getting to see Paul then and there and, and, you know, always at the end of the bar, you know, if, you know, one of the things I absolutely love uh, about the fella is if he hadn't seen us, in the, the early part of the year, he always had our New Year drink ready for us, right? <laughs> and so if yep. we went in and placed an order for drinks, he'd say, those two are those two are on me. Yes. Uh, that's your New Year. And that is incredibly right. classy. That is unbelievably yep. classy. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just and, and so getting to see him last year, yeah. he... 
actually talked about Thomas, his 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 son, his boy, uh, taking over the Bon Accord, mm. and and Paul getting to spend more time in in front of the bar and and let the next generation take over. Sure. And and I'd I'd said to Thomas, you know. Your your dad's still in here every night. He's still on the end of that bar every night. Maybe not every night. I don't want to you know tell stories. <laughs> um, but he's he's often at the end of that bar. Yeah. And uh, and I said, you know, is, is he gonna let you make this place yours? And and Thomas said right away, you know, I, I've already talked to him about the changes I'm going to make, and he's already signed off. He's already on board. He's not standing my way. I'm not taking over his Bon Accord. I'm going to make his Bon Accord my Bon Accord. And I, and I thought that was incredibly magnanimous as well to be the dad, you know, you and I are both dads, you know, if you can imagine handing something off to the kid, Takes a lot to take a step back and say, you enact your ideas. You know, Thomas is a grown man. He was 40 years old when he took over the keys to the bottom oh, court. Okay. I didn't know uh, he's not 18. Okay. He's not 21. You know, he's 40 years old. Yeah. But that that's still a big step when, you know, like we're saying here, when you've built that up from 2001, you've won various accolades, various global awards, you're globally renowned. Here you go, son. Here's the keys. <laughs> and he seemed to be adjusting to it quite well. So that was the last time I saw him. That was the last conversation I had with him. Um, and so, you know, we've lost Paul. We, we haven't lost the Bon Accord. Yeah. We've still got Thomas uh, putting his own ideas in place there. You know, I have I have another remembrance of Paul, but, you know, just, Please. just with, the, with the Bon in mind, like I, I really – I really loved what you said, you know, Paul may be gone, but, but the bond is there. It is, it's such a fixture and, you know, there's the, there's that sort of glass cabinet back there and we, we have your keeper keepers bottle back there and, and Jess and Swede Scott have bottles back there as well. Um, there's always yep. single cast nation representation, whether it's behind the bar or in that cabinet. And, and it's just nice to know that, that that connection will just will will go on. Um, it just that feels special. But uh, anyway, b- back to my remembrance. I remember in 2014, you and I went to the bond. I don't. Re- I think it may have been during a whiskey geek tour or something like that. It was a bit after your birthday, and we go into the bond. And for some reason, and Paul is not the only one, for some reason, maybe it's how similar we look, maybe it's our accents, how how similar those are. Um, People get us confused a lot. (laughs) And so Paul came up with this bottle uh, of of old Pulteney 40-year-old. And he said, I heard you just turned 40. I want to give you a pour of this. Mm. And it happened so quickly, I didn't get a chance to say, oh, that, that, that was actually Jason who turned 40. I turned 40 last year. Uh, but you know what? So anyway, so, so I share that. You, me, Jess, Sweet Scott um, shared that with the four of us. And then he came back. Do you remember this? He came back with another bottle. He wanted to do a... Um, uh, just like a blind tasting or whatever. See if we can mm-hmm. figure out the distillery, maybe the age. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was like a 34-year-old Port Ellen. Just, here you go. <laughs> and he left the bottle on the table. He left the bottle on the table. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think that was maybe the same trip with the same Whiskey Geek tour where Ben Weldy and Aaron Krause we're sitting having pints and having a conversation. And I look over and the two of them are behind the bar pouring pints. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> like how did, how did we get here? Right? Like, and Paul's in the middle of them and yeah. just showing them the ropes. Yeah. And, and I, I know he did that for, you know, tens of people and hundreds of people and, and maybe thousands of people. But I think, he he had the type of presence 
where you always felt, I always felt like I was the first person he was doing that for. Yes. It never felt rote. It never felt scheming. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It always felt like he saw people on that side of the bar and he wanted to show them this side of the bar. Or he wanted to make them feel like they'd come home, right? Which is exactly how, you know, we felt when we went back to the Bon Accord. You know, the multiple times we went back, the times we took Whiskey Geek tours in there, the times we had the the veggie sausages with the in the giant Yorkshire pudding. Oh yes, right? oh with the mashed potato. Yes, which is you know, you know, <laughs> an in, an incredible dish that Thomas took off the menu. Uh, <laughs> this is going to turn into a Thomas bashing episode. <laughs> um, no, we, we won't do that. We won't do that. Um, yeah, you know, I, I I really feel for for his family. Um, yes, he retired. But, oh, for sure, for sure. But he was he 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 was not old, right? Um, I was I was just about to ask you that. Do you? I, I've got the answer if you don't. But what age do you think he was? My guess is that he was in his early. Oh, if if Thomas was forty, yeah, I, I would say early to mid sixties. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. He um, so his birthday is actually his birthday is July twenty first. Oh, and he would have turned 67 on his birthday. There you go. There you go. Wow. Yeah, I was I was having this conversation with Jess this morning when we, when we were talking about Paul and, and saying, you know, I remember being a kid and my papa was, well, one of my papas was 74 when he passed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it felt like, you know, that's a, that's a good grandpa age. You know, it seems all right. My other grandpa, my other papa passed when he was, 64 Oof. and i remember my mom just being distraught absolutely at her wits end and 64 you know was a young man mm-hmm. and and to hear six you know coming 67 for paul that's that's a young man that's that's not a grandpa age that's not a papa age you know and and even as we're living here in 2023 those ages are moving along a little bit, yeah. you know, a, a papa age now is late seventies, you know, you know, you know, you know, my kids have got grandmothers who are 78 and 81 and still going strong. It's 67 as a, it's is a small number. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's it, I as, mean, as two chaps who are looking 50 square in the face. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> I was thinking too, there's the connection with Paul. It, there's also a connection to Haida. Back in in 2019, when when I was inducted into the Keepers, I brought Haida Haida out with me, and, and we made sure to go to the bond. And she got to meet Paul. And and when I told her the news, because I said, "Oh, I've, I've got to pour some whiskey tonight," and some of the uh, viewers and listeners will know this. I, I'm really limiting my my alcohol intake to maybe a couple drinks a week, something, something like that, trying to lose some weight. And I said to Haida, I've got to pour a whiskey tonight. And she gave me that look like, it's not drink night. What are you doing? And I said, nah, P- Paul McDonough from the bond pass. And she's like, oh, right. Yes. Okay. Do that. Pour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, without doubt, without it, any shadow of it, a doubt, it's. It seemed to be the bond was was one of those places too. Again, back I mentioned Whiskey Geek Tours, where that was the place we would always take people. That was the place we would always bump into David Sturk. He wasn't on our tours, but he would come up and he would hang with yeah. us. He'd hang out with the, the tour guests. Yeah, it just it it's the place, right? You're in Scotland. You're in Glasgow. It's the place. Right, right. The, there's a there's a story that you should tell because you'll remember it better than me because right. you were on the floor. Do you remember the second Whiskey Jubilee New York City and who showed up amongst the punters 
Um, That's right. In full kilt. In full <laughs> kilt. He was, <laughs> he was, he was like the second, he was the one Scot, Scotsman on the other side of the table in a sea of black hats and beards. And it was just his, his, <laughs> Uh, his sporin just glinting, the, the the metal on it just glinting, and he came up with a big <laughs> smile on his face. Like, what a guy that he would come out and and support our event. Wow, I I completely forgot about that. That's amazing. That was remarkable. Yeah, I was thinking about yeah. that this morning. The you know all the times we talk about us going to Glasgow, us going to the Bon, us seeing Paul at the end of the bar, us chatting with him there, but he did come out to New York City and he did support a jubilee, and and that wow. meant the absolute world. It also meant the world to him to be a partner bar of Single Cast Nation, and I think coming out to New York for the Jubilee kind of yeah. demonstrated what being in business with us meant to him. We knew what yeah, it looked sure. like, what it meant to us. To see that reciprocated from him r- was remarkable. Absolutely not a thing he had to do. Absolutely not a thing that we expected of him. Nope. But nope. W- what a mensch. Like, what an incredible mensch. Uh, to come out and do that and support us and pour in my dram in New York City. I was, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I was thinking about that this morning, just smiling. That was a real, real oh, good wow. one. Wow, that's that's great. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I've, I've got one. Um, I've got I'm, one I'm, last one for. Yeah, uh, just just one more for you, please. Um, and this was, you know. W- I, I made a Facebook post yesterday, just you know, toasting to him with the Glenn Murray, and and one of the the thoughts that came to my mind was, you know, he's one of these guys that's synonymous with Scotch whiskey, right? It's like that's where you go to drink your single malt, right? Mm. And and I just I think of Scotland, I think of Scotch whiskey. He's going to come to mind, but I recall early on he had brought in some bottles of our our first two-year-old Catoctin Creek from the white wine cask. And I remember thinking, man, this two-year-old rye at like 60 million percent alcohol, (laughs) whatever it was, like this is one that I I just, I'm glad he brought it in, but I don't think he'll appreciate it. I, I just don't know if it'll be as something that will float his boat. And it floored him and he showed it to to the Bon Accord Whiskey Club. And that became like the, you know, the mm. highlighted pour. And and to know that that he got out of what I just assumed was his comfort zone to say, man, this is really special. I've got to highlight this with my group. You know, just, it was one of those things. It was that validation, right? This, this, this well-respected whiskey guy also digging our American stuff and, and showing it to as many people as he, as he can just really, again, you know, if you can make it there, you know, it's, it's one of those things. So I think about that every, every once in a while too. <laughs> well, and to add on to that as well, you mentioned the glass cabinet. That's the keys club that sits at the front yeah, yeah, that's it. of the Bon Accord. And the first thing, Jess uh, and and Chris Sweetscott uh, put in there was our Westland two year old. Now there's a a glass <laughs> cabinet of well aged scotchies, and whatever went in the cabinet had to get approval mm-hmm. from Paul and and Jess and Sweetscott put the Westland two in front of Paul for approval, and he signed off on it. That you know, level of support there to get that in the glass cabinet, surrounded by a, a host of remarkable pours, you know, traditionally aged whiskey, uh, aged sure. scotches yeah, yeah, yeah. and single malts at yeah. that. But there was our little Westland poking out, uh, courtesy of, of Jess and Chris, but also signed off on by the big man. Um, the, the, the final part I wanted to add is he was also instrumental 
in in putting together Glasgow's Whiskey Festival uh, along with our good good friend Mark. Right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, and and Julie Hamilton who came along there as well. Um. But but there's a festival, right? There's there's um what two twice a year it grew to twice a year um oh, it was okay. two yeah. sessions on the day it was held um very well supported by brands i had the mm-hmm. honor of pouring there with jess in november of 2019 when we were launching our row our rest of the world line ah, yes, yes, um yes. Yep. that that was a great right great great place to be great place to feel supported and one of the things that we talked about before we launched ROW is I'm born and raised in Ayr, just you know, 30, 35 minutes southwest of Glasgow. Having a presence in Glasgow, standing on my own two feet in Glasgow, mm-hmm. pouring mm-hmm. our whiskies, pouring our selections, pouring our independent bottling brand. Like, incredible thrill, absolutely remarkable. <laughs> And to know that it sat in the bond in a couple of spots, to know it was represented at Glasgow's Whiskey Festival, um, was fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And and so just to reiterate, the the level of support we experienced from Paul McDonough was absolutely remarkable. The fact he enjoyed seeing us, whether we saw him in Glasgow or on the occasions we saw him in New York City, like a really remarkable chap and and in one of the tributes in the the Herald Scotland someone had said Glasgow has lost a true gent and i think that absolutely sums it up he he was a true gent he was a mensch he was incredibly supportive yeah. of our efforts and uh, and he he knew how thankful we were. We're not we're not just saying this in remembrance. We were no, able no, to no, say no, this no. to yeah. his face, and we said it to his face many times. How much we appreciated his support. Well, there you go. I think I think we can maybe end it there and pop up this banner for our viewers. Rest in peace, big man. Hey. Rest in peace, Paul. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and if I can add one more thing, if if you're a viewer on YouTube and you were in the bond and you experienced Paul McDonough, you know, dr- drop drop a remembrance underneath here. Um, if you're one of our many, many listeners, drop an email, info at singlecastnation.com or questions at one nation under whiskey.com, no Ian Whiskey. Share your remembrances of Paul as well. And uh, and we'd be happy to to start the next episode by remembering uh, Paul McDonough and celebrating Paul McDonough and continuing to appreciate what he has done for whiskey. Does that sound good, Joshua? Sounds great to me. I think that's a perfect place to to end this episode and in our remembrance. And, and I do look forward to hearing some stories. Some people have posted some of their remembrances up in our single cast nation page. Um, some have posted some up on my own personal Excellent. one. Um, so yeah, it would just be great to hear, you know, even if, yeah, Hey, he, he poured me a beer. What a nice guy. Just be great to, to hear anything you have. So <laughs> absolutely. All right, Jason. Well, you enjoy that. All right. Well, we'll get out of here slightly different than we have been getting right. out of here. We're going to get out of here by saying cheers to Paul. Cheers, Paul.